Thanks for tuning in to our Kentucky Derby 2024 preview edition broadcast here on both Patreon and YouTube. So we are going to handicap the Kentucky Derby in just a little bit. But before we do that, just want to intro our uh, expert handicappers, John Hardoon from the Sheets. How's it going, John? Good, good. How are you? I'm doing good, John. How many years have you been doing this now for, John? Too many. <laughs> Is that 50 it? years, like 50 years. Oh, come on now. Really? I'm, I'm 65. You... I started at 15. 15. The That's awesome. Happy anniversary. Thank you. <laughs> September. <laughs> uh, Chad, of course, professional uh, thoroughbred trainer. How's it going, Chad? That's going well. I have uh, some uh, some uh, FOMO not being at uh, not being at Church of Downs. Disappointing. Uh, to not be there this year participating, but hopefully uh, next year we'll you know, be there, Chad. Next year, you know, it's uh, it's as as a as a horse trainer, you know, there's some some races and events that you you point for every year, and we thought we had a few a few chances this year uh, with some really really nice horses, and you know, fortunately, you know, they're not they're not career ending injuries, but they're they're horses that unfortunately had to miss miss some time, and some have have derby points or were on the derby trail, and. You know, it's it's it, it speaks to the the magnitude of how difficult it is to to get to this race and and just getting here. And I, I've been very very pleased with with all the interviews and everything I've seen uh, from some of these trainers. Obviously, some of the trainers that are there year in and year out, but some of these new trainers and 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 them enjoying the moment um, and really embracing what this is all about. You know, some of these younger trainers that you know I've been I've been fortunate and and, and blessed to know for a long time. Danny Gargan and I owned horses together 20 years ago, and uh, I lived with Phil D'Amato right outside of Churchill Downs. Uh, and Whit Beckman I've known for a long, long time as well. So, you know, even though uh, I'm not there this year, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that that some of my brethren are, are, are there and, and kind of representing the the next generation of trainers to try and take on the the usual suspects of the uh, the Steve Asmussen's, the Brad Cox's, the Todd Fletcher's, et cetera. Yeah, I think uh, with, with the – reality shows going on or everybody's always looking for the best uh, new concept that would be uh, uh, quite a trip uh, to go behind the scenes of reality and, and 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 see see how hard you guys work at it and uh and what kind of crazy but uh real satisfying we, uh, industry you work in they, they did it for for the breeders cup for us uh, it was actually a six point series six part series on youtube uh, that you can check out that was pretty cool until the last one was the breeders cup and we lost then it wasn't so cool anymore uh <laughs> But uh, I mean, they fought. Look, they followed us everywhere for five months. Um, I mean, everything. There, there's a lot of there's a lot of good stuff that didn't make it into the uh, that ended up on the cutting room floor. But I mean, followed us to Saratoga to Churchill to the to the Breeders' Cup, and um, I think a lot of people enjoyed it. It was uh, it was done by the <clears throat> the brothers that actually they they made the, uh, the the movie the first Saturday in May, which was a documentary that did just that that followed some horses on the Derby Trail. Uh, back in the day that uh, I'll, I'll pop in actually probably today or tomorrow and, 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 and relive. They do, they do a great job. The Hennigan brothers, just an absolute great job of, of storytelling and, and things like that. If anyone hasn't seen the first Saturday in May, um, definitely worth uh, worth a watch. And it, it gets you kind of get you goosebumps. If, if you, if you love this sport and you love this industry, I mean, that's what the Derby's all about. And, and, and the one thing is for sure, this is the one race, despite the fact that the Breeders' Cup is worth more money, although they did raise this purse now to $5 million, But um, for Joe for Joe Public, and, and, and Greg, you do a lot of sports shows, not just horse racing, but you do a lot of different sports shows. Um, this is the one race and the one day a year that your normal fans that watch Rutgers football podcasts or the Packers or college basketball, whatever, this is the one day that they'll pause what they're doing in their normal lives and they'll flip on NBC and they'll watch the Kentucky Derby. And and so this is the one day a year that all eyes are on us. And um, hopefully we embrace that, make the most of it, tell some good stories. And uh, and people can enjoy in, in the Kentucky Derby experience for what it is because it's it's phenomenal. I mean, look, John John was actually, you know, we, we talked start the show talking about he's been doing this for 50 years. Uh, making the walk over a couple of years ago, John, like you did with Cyberknife, I mean, even though you were the last one to uh, to get there before they closed the gate, um, 
how 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 exciting I, obviously it wasn't the result we wanted you know he didn't finish where we wanted that that derby but but talk just about from your standpoint because you don't make the walk that often. No, is it's unbelievable. Like, it's unbelievable. What's that experience like for you, John, making yeah. that walk over in front of 120,000 fans uh, going to the Derby? And you just got to look up at the stands. You're coming from the backside. You look up at this. It's the most amazing thing in the world. You got all these eyeballs staring at you. It's just it's it's an unbelievable feeling, and uh, hopefully we get to do it again and soon. We go to the big one, the Kentucky Derby, which is officially race number 12. It should go off about 6.57 on Saturday night, a mile and a quarter. And uh, just so you know, this is a $5 million race. You also have a late scratch of the number nine horse, Encino. He's coming out, which means that uh, Epic Ride draws in off the also eligible list. So Epic Ride. Yeah, number 21 has won this race before. <laughs> yes, he has. Yeah. Look By the out. way, the interesting thing for all those people that wanted to bet against fierceness because post position seventeen has never won. Well, guess what? He's now post position sixteen. So post position seventeen will remain <laughs> un will remain winless. Interesting. Okay. All right. So let's go through it. You don't know a stronghold, you don't know. We'll start yeah. we'll uh, start. you're right. You're actually right. All right, we'll start with the one door knock. And by the way, uh, just taking a look at our actually at your predictions before the beginning of the year, John, uh, which two year old male will have a breakthrough? And one of your three, actually, two of your three are in this race Sierra Leone and door knock. Uh, Chad has two of the three in this race fierceness and Sierra, and Sierra Leone. Well, Chad did a lot better than I did because he picked the first and second choice. I put the second choice and probably a horse that's seen his better days, but let's go through it. Yeah, door knock, 20 to 1. I mean, if let's let's just talk about those first five races of his career. Everything looked good on the sheets. 2017, 14, 13, and then 9 to begin this year in the win at the Fountain of Youth. And then, I mean, look, uh, you can say what you want if you want to call it a bounce or just, uh, you know, it just wasn't a good day. He ran a 13 in that race. But before that, John, he was looking really good, and now you're getting 20 to 1. Unfortunately, you're getting the one position. Yeah, you're getting the rail. And his biggest problem is you could even draw a line through his last race because they decided to experiment last time out and take the horse back, if you recall. Yep. The dead speed horse, he has one way to go, and uh, they decided to experiment in that race. So maybe that's why he didn't run well. And he could have also bounced off the nine. But that being said, if you cover the nine up with your finger, he's never run better than the 13. That's not going to get it done here. And nine's not even going to get it done. You're going to have to run better. So for that reason and the fact that he's breaking from the rail, and he has no choice but to go step on the gas as soon as that gate opens, and uh, he will be pressing from the inside. He's going to get pace pressure from the outside, which really gives him, in my opinion, very little chance to win. Look, if you're gonna if you're gonna go, you might as well go with Luis Saez, though, right? Yeah. I mean, they got the right jockey on his back for 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 the mission that they're gonna have to take place. Um, look, credit to Danny Gargan; he's got two horses in this race, and uh, this horse was uh, he said openly this was the best horse he ever trained uh, before he debuted. He he ran well in that first race, um, came back and ran well in the sapling. He's he he's he's right there. You know, the the problem is, at the end of the day, his best race is in the Remsen, and the Remsen was a pace-aided race. Where, it was, where the, the, track, the inside the track, was also the place to be. If inside you were, inside yeah. speed on that day was, was the best. Sierra Leone was probably the best horse on that day. And he's come back, and, and he did what he had to do in what was a ridiculously scratched down field in the Fountain of Youth um, when he was probably about 70%. And they played around in the bluegrass, and that's fine. You just wish the horse was going into this race with just a little bit more momentum uh, than he has right now. And like John said, um, Pitt, you don't want pace presence on the outside of you. You'd rather be the one on the outside hip than, than the inside. You're not going to get a breather for a mile and a quarter. You're going to have to run every step of the way. I mean, he needs to run the race of his life and then some, like John said, to win this race. And uh, look, nice horse, you know, just not. I don't know that today with these circumstances that it's going to be his day. And look who's right by. Doorknock, the two, Sierra Leone. Talking about uh, 
preferably looking uh, to close if you're going to have that inside position. Well, Sierra Leone is definitely a closer. Taking a look at the sheets, 15, 11, 11, 8. Those are the sheet numbers for Sierra Leone, John. Back-to-back -back wins, including the bluegrass last time out. Out of everyone that drew post positions, he got the absolutely worst possible post position for himself. And the reason being is he has no early speed. And you know Dornock's going. So he's going to end up inside. He can't go to the lead. The best he could do is sit inside and hope something opens up. Or he has another choice. He could drop back and circle 19 horses. In either case, the post position draw that he got absolutely detrimental to him. I think he's up against it. He may be the not the best horse in the race, but he's going to have to come overcome so much bro, by breaking from that post position that uh, I, I would like to see it to believe it. Can he win? Of course he could certainly win. I'm going to use him with whoever I'm king, but uh, at, to key this horse at a short price – with what he's going to have to overcome, I don't see it. That's that's the thing that you just hit it, John. There's, it's not just that, all of that that he has to overcome, but he's three to one. Right. If he was twenty to one, fine. You you take a chance and you bet him or whatever. But I'm sure Chad has a completely different read on it. So let's hear from. Well, Chad, Chad what would be your strategy, or what do you think the strategy is going to be for Chad Brown? Well, the strategy is going to be simple here. Okay. If you watch his races, and, and, and it's it's interesting because normally in these three-year-old prep races, there's so many of them that you see, like the door knock. It was a five-horse field. The Santa Anita is a five-horse field, four-horse field. The, the the thing that's interesting about this horse is his last three starts was a 10-horse field, a 12-horse field, and a 10-horse field. I know it's not 20. I get it. Believe me, I get it. And there's nothing like the Derby. But this horse, man, I mean, the things that he's done, okay – Nobody closed on Remsen Day. Nobody closed on yeah, Remsen Day. That's why we loved him. No one was a bigger fan of this horse than than this group right here, right. to tell you. that We he loved him. Back, he runs yeah. back in the Risen Star. I think he's 75% fit, and he crushes. He ran awesome that day, running down track phantom and was loose on the lead. Then he goes to the Bluegrass, and despite the shenanigans uh, uh, of the gate, which people are trying to make a, a bigger deal about than it was, Nobody closed all weekend, opening weekend at Keeneland. From and that he, post, circled, too, he yeah. circled the field like it was nothing. Tyler Gaffleon is, is riding with as much confidence as any jockey in the room right now. If this was five years ago, Tyler Gaffleon, I might agree with you. But Tyler Gaffleon wants to win the Eclipse Award. He was a finalist last year. He wants to win top jockey this year. And to do it, you need to win a race like this. He's going to have all the confidence in the world. He's got ice water in his veins. Uh, Chad Brown wants to win this race. He's come close. A lot closer than people give him credit for calling him a turf trainer. He's run second in this race a few times. I, I, I think that this horse has every opportunity to win this race. The question is going to be how far ahead is fierceness at the top of the stretch, and can he run him down? But, look, expectations have been high on this horse from day one, $2.3 million purchase as a yearling. That's what they're supposed to do here. They're supposed to be this kind, and he's been this kind. And, and, and look – I understand it's a derby. I understand everybody wants the sexy pick, the long shot pick, everything else. We spent, you know, the show yesterday for the Oaks show, the, the Churchill Down show gave up a couple of prices. I'm sorry. I'm chalking out here. And the reason is between Fierceness and Sierra Leone, in my opinion, they have stamped themselves as the two best horses in this crop, period, bar none, end of story. And, yes, while many things can go wrong and very little can go right, you have one horse that's going to be in front, one horse that's going to come from behind if the race falls apart. I just think they're the two best horses in the country, and, and, and it's going to be tough for me to figure out a way to try and beat them because I think they're that good. Uh, do you see, and I know we, were, we have a lot of horses to cover here, but and it's early, but do you see this being a race where yeah. you're going to get a certain number of horses on – average or you know for a big race like this that are going to go for the lead do you think there's a chance this could be a blistering pace kind of race or the exact opposite that there's just not enough really well, they'll go fast. Look, look they'll go they'll go fast i mean the, the one thing we've learned about the derby they always go is, fast is yeah. they always they always they always go fast there's a there's a new jockey that gets excited that can't yeah. hold the horse but the, the buzz of the crowd i mean they're breaking and the crowd is erupting and they're screaming like the indy 500 and daytona 500 and all the Super Bowl kickoff and everything else. There's just so many juices flowing that there's going to be horses going. And like we said, Dornock has to be committed. Fierceness needs to get away cleanly. There's just there's a lot of factors that in, in, incorporate around being in the front. Now, they might be able to slow it down. They might go the half in, in 
47, 46 and four. I mean, but they're going to, they're going to be, they're going to be boogieing. Um, there's no doubt about it. There's enough pace in this race early on uh, to set it up for Sierra. Leone. He's not going to get beat because they went too slow. That's for sure. A uh, couple of uh, things here. Uh, the last horse to win from the number two position. You guys know? Who cares? Who? Oh. <laughs> Affirmed. 1978. Oh, it's been a few years. Uh, that's a pretty good horse, though. Yeah. And then two fills finished second last year from the third position. Okay. So let's well, keep we're that in the two position. All right. And speaking of the third position, Mystic Dan, 20 to one shot. Back to back tens coming in here, including the third place finish at the Arkansas Derby, John. He's fine. He hasn't done anything wrong. You don't have that real foundation. He did run a 12 as a two year old, but. Again, this is another one of those McPeak horses. Believe it or not, though, this horse is better at three than he was at two. The horse is fine. You know, he's like the second tier, but he is 20 to one. And uh, anyone that wanted to make a case for him, I could certainly see it. The one thing that this horse wants is that it rains. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. His his performance in the Southwest, um, we weren't sure. Was it was it the track? Was it the, the slop? Was it whatever? He came back, and I know he, he ran a second 10, but he was never, ever beating Muth um, in that race last time out. I mean, maybe he bounced a little bit. Whatever case you want to make, maybe he doesn't really want to go that far. Um, if it rains, if this is the only thing I'll say. I don't like this horse. If it rains, if there's moisture on the track, because of how well he ran, he ran in the rain, in the slop, I will use this horse if it rains. By the way... That was one of the greatest rides you'll ever see. Go watch that ride by Brian Hernandez. He had like the 11 or 12 post and ended up on the rail. Don't ask me how. At Oaklawn, it was one of the greatest rides you'll ever see. But, I mean, if it's not if it's not raining, I'm, I'm going to pass on Mr. Okay. All right. The four is catching freedom. You got Cox. You got Pratt. Taking a look at the sheet line, you have 15, 14 last year, and then 14, 13, 9 this year. Ran a 9 in the grade 2 Louisiana Derby win, John. Yeah, out of all the, well, now only two Cox horses left in the race. This is the one that I like best. The horse technically has never gone backwards. 15, 14, 14, 13, 9, time off. The, race, the races are spaced perfectly. If he repeats the 9, which he certainly can, He's got a shot, and if he makes a forward move, he has a real shot. Look, he was third in the Risen Star, which obviously was that key race where so many horses have come back and won from from that race. The the Louisiana Derby performance, he looked like he, he was going to finish last. Yeah, I mean, it never really seemed like he got going. Then all of a sudden, like a rocket came up his ass, and he flew, and he and he won the race. I, I'm not a huge fan of this horse. I, I know I understand why he's the third choice. I know Brad Cox wants to win the Derby and cross the wire first more than any other trainer in the world. Uh, but I just don't think he's, I don't think he's as good as some of the other horses in this race. And um, if he starts playing around in, 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 in this race, he's not going to be able to make that same move that he made in the Louisiana Derby. The horses are just better in this race. So um, for me, you know, and you'd like to see more from him in the morning time. Um, the the quote unquote experts that are the Twitter handicappers that watch workouts once a year, and I put them in quotations because they have no idea what they're talking about. Um, they said the horse looks great. For me, he looked awful when he breezed last week. <laughs> he, he, got, he, he he I mean that that horse that he breezed with Encino was was just ten lengths better than him. If if, if Giroux wanted to, he would have beat this horse by thirty lengths in the workout. He just – I know he's a lazy worker. I get it. Don't get me wrong. I understand. Everybody will say he's hes not a good workhorse, blah, blah, blah. That's fine. But to win the – show me something. And as, as the third choice, I just don't like it. Okay. The five is next. Catalytic, a 30-to-1 shot. Safi Joseph training 16 last year, 12-11 and 11 this year. Heading in the right direction. But, uh, look, he was second in the Florida Derby. So, uh, you know, a little bit far back. 13 lengths yeah, back to fierce. they have like five horses in that race? How many horses were in that race? Five horses or something? Nine. Oh, nine were in that race? I'm sorry. Yeah. That was the other Florida race yeah, that scratched yeah, yeah. yeah, and listen, it's Safi Joseph. Uh, the horse is a little slow. You would have to improve. He's lightly raced. He's only making career start number four, and it's coming in the derby, so. I mean, did you notice anything, Chad, in that race? Uh, again, it's hard to when you're 13 lengths behind a dominating performance. But, you know, he did run an 11 in a big race in his third career start. Look, he's 13 lengths behind the 
morning line favorite for the Kentucky Derby. So here, here's my thing. I like this horse when he broke his mane. He needs some time off. He, he, he's never been wanted. He was at two two-year-old sales, couldn't even get a bid. Nobody wanted him. Uh, scratched the first time. I think RNA the second time. But nobody wanted this horse. Went to the Derby. To me, it's amazing that nobody's bought into this horse. As many people as they – I'm surprised John Stewart buys everything that breathes. You know, I know, and he bought a piece of Just a Touch. Um, look, I think that this horse is a nice horse. He's – I think the added distance won't be a problem for him. If you're trying to make money – Right, which is what this show is all about. I have no problem using this horse third or fourth. Can he win? I don't think so. I don't even think he can run second. But I think he can run third or fourth. He's got enough of an upside. Some, some of these horses here, I think they're starting to regress a little bit. You know, we don't know what we're seeing from Mystic Dan. Doorknock looks like maybe going the other way. You know, Track Phantom maybe. The, this horse, at least he's lightly raced. There's a chance he's still on the uprise. So, you know, at a big price, he's not going to take a lot of money. He's, yeah. you know, wh- why can't he... he, he he round out the superfecta, the high five, whatever it is. I don't think he can win, but I he don't mind. Suck you. Up. He could yeah, suck he can up for a piece. Okay. All right, the six, Just Steel, another 20 to one shot. Look who's back. D Wayne Lucas training. Coming off a seven in the runner up at the Arkansas Derby, but that seven was, I believe, a three point top. So uh, what about Just Steel, John? It was a three-point top from his two-year-old campaign. This year, it's a six-point top. I don't like this horse at all. I don't think he wants to get a mile and a quarter. I think Keith, Keith S. Mewson will get uh, will get a wake-up call in the middle of the race. Shit, I'm in the derby. Now what? <laughs> I mean, the good thing is he's in the Oaks the day before, right? Yeah, so and, I'm not riding, have... and I'm not riding my dad's horse, but uh, whatever. <laughs> He'll have some experience. Look, uh, the, the, the interesting thing I want to talk about this horse, and we talked briefly about it on our Oaks podcast yesterday, the filly that runs in the Oaks for D. Wayne Lucas, Lemon Muffin, she worked too fast on April 27th. Way too fast. She won the first race in 33. So and then this horse is going to breeze the next day. And rather than use a different rider, D. Wayne Lucas uses the same exact rider. Look, the guy's, the guy's in the Hall of Fame. He's the coach. He's done this a million years. I would never have let this girl ride this uh, ride him after riding the other one the day before. I would have made a change, made Keith Asmussen fly up and r- ride I don't care, Bucky, the, the outright, somebody, anybody. They, she was so scared, she went too slow on this one. So it was the opposite. No gal about nothing. Um, that was disappointing because I did want to use this horse a little bit. He's a trier. He's a hard knocker. He's run 11 times, which is more than probably, like, you can put the next three horses together. I think they've run a total of 11 times, um, and he's run 11 times. He's got the experience. He's not going to be scared in between horses. He needs to be the more experienced one uh, for the rider. I'm I'm happy for Keith Asmussen getting a, a chance to ride in the Derby. Nobody's worked harder in a, in a shorter period of time than Keith, and he deserves this opportunity. Finished as the second leading rider at Oakland, but John's right. There's there's a difference between you know watching the race in the box with your dad, and now riding in the race for the very first time with all these Hall of Fame jockeys surrounding you. Um, look, I, I I'm I, I'm rooting for Keith. Uh, he's a, he's a really good kid with a good head on his shoulders. Um, But you went dead, Chad. We don't hear you. You froze. You back? Oh, I said. I just. I just said. I think this might be a tough. uh, tough Okay. Next up, another twenty to one shot. Anna Marie and Anna Marie started last year sixteen, twelve, eleven. This year had a seventeen disappointing start in the Risen Star. Came back strong in the uh, Louisiana Derby. Uh, losing that race uh, just uh, by a length, ran a 10. That was a new top, and John seems pretty excited here. I love this horse. I love the line on this horse. As a two-year-old, he ran an 11. He ran a a 9.5 last time out. He's a little slower. He still has to improve a little, but I just like what they've done with this horse. I like the way they took the 17 two-starts back at fairgrounds in the slop. I could throw that race out. It doesn't mean anything. Not only that, this horse has a win at Churchill. Listen, I know I'm getting Ben Curtis, but I'm getting 20 to 1. I'm getting 20 to 1, and I think I may get longer than 20 to 1. This is a forward-moving horse. Yeah, I could come here and give you Sierra Leone and and fierceness like every other ridiculous handicapper, but uh, no one's going to remember uh, that you gave out fierceness or you gave out Sierra Leone. But if you give out a 20 to 1 shot, they'll remember. And they're going to remember because this 20-to-1 shot is going to out 
run his odds. I think he has a great shot. You know, and uh, maybe I'm wrong. I probably am wrong, but at least I'm going down with the price. Look, we, we've we've had the pleasure of, of doing most of these races, right? In our weekly in our weekly shows, we've covered these races and we've talked essentially about Anna Marie. He wasn't ready for the first race. He was getting outworked before the right. racing start. Um, it was just a means to an end. Uh, Whit Beckman, uh, for people who don't know, was an assistant for a long time. For Todd Pletcher and Chad Brown, which not a lot of people went to both schools. Right. He went to both schools, <laughs> the two stints in between of Saudi Arabia, where he, he, he trained 78% of his horses with both tendons. Um, look, he knows what he's doing. He's a hard boot Kentucky guy. Um, I'm happy for him. I'm happy for connections. Uh, horse is doing good. And the horse is going into this race the right way. This is a horse who's not a good workhorse, like Catching Freedom, and yet he comes into this race going 59-1 and one in that last work, which was 10 days out. I love that it was April 25th. Gave you a little bit more extra time uh, to recover. You know, smart by wit. You know, knowing that he had that last race March 23rd, needed to give him just a, one little more uh, uh, piece of work. I love the way this horse is, is trained into the race. I love the way he's finished his last two breezes uh, for a horse who's not a good workhorse. See, all winter uh, at Fairgrounds, he was getting beat by drip, and, and, and now he's – He's starting to kind of go the other way. He's starting to get better. He's starting to figure things out. Um, you're coming into the race at the right time, and that's what you want to do in these kind of situations. Um, things didn't go right before the Risen Star, but it seems like since then, everything's gone right. And at the end of the day, I got no problem with Witt sticking with Ben Curtis. He rode him last time. He rode him well last yeah. time. Um, you know, he's, he's a jockey who's ridden overseas, who's been involved in big fields before. Danny Gargan mentioned it. Um, in an interview the, the other day, why he's riding Frankie Dottori on Society Man. He said, nobody's been in more 20, 30 horse fields from Royal Ascot and stuff like that than Frankie Dottori. Well, Ben Curtis has been in some of those big fields as well. So um, he's used to that. He knows the horse. He breathes the horse the other day. Um, and, and we've seen some of these 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 jockeys getting the opportunity and, and winning right away. I mean, nothing's more famous than Sonny Leone just a few years ago with Red Strike. So uh, certainly, you know, I, I agree with John Honor Marie, certainly – Looks like he can run out, outrun his odds at twenty to one for sure. Okay, next up, just a touch. The eight horse at ten to one. This is a Cox trained horse. This horse has done nothing wrong with those sheets. All solid. I mean, you start off with a ten uh, to break your maiden right away is very impressive. Eight and nine, John. Uh, when you start off with a ten, and it's, it was this January. Um, is it asking too much to, 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 to want the horse to have, I don't know, maybe a seven or a six by now, or do you think an eight and a nine is satisfactory? An eight and a nine is satisfactory. I just wish he would have flip flopped the last two races. I wish the nine would have come first and then the eight, because the fact that he made it, I know I'm being technical here and people that aren't uh, familiar with the sheets will probably get lost. So I'll make it simple. He made a backward move last time out, even though he won. I would have preferred it be 9-8 than 8-9. That's well, all. Well, here, here's the thing, though, John, and, and you do have to explain this to people, okay? The sheets take into effect a lot of different mitigating factors that other other right. sources don't do. So when he ran in the Gotham, he's seven wide into the turn. When he was in the Bluegrass, he's on the rail and in the two-path leading out. So, so the ground loss that he had in the Gotham helped make that number lower in the Gotham yeah. Maybe then, it, then it, relatively speaking, than it could have been because visually his bluegrass performance was better than his Gotham performance. Visually, but not figure, not on right, figures, right. right? So, yeah, you're right, Chad. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, listen, the horse certainly has a shot. He, I don't believe he'll be ten to one. What do you think he'll go off shorter? Yeah, I think. I, well, now that the other Cox horse is out, so those Cox apologists, you know, they they have right. those horses. To on. But look, I, I think. <laughs> I think he ends up being the, the third choice. I, I, third choice. Yeah. I think, look, the barn, I think, likes him more than they like catching. They do. Yeah, that's what Normally I mean. when the barn likes the barn, the barn somehow everybody else in the world seems to find out about it, and it takes a lot of money. Look, he's a really nice horse. He's improving. He's only run the three times. We, we, we gave this horse out, Greg, the one time we did that derby preview show uh, of, of, of who our best, you know, our favorite horses were on the derby trail. I like this horse a lot. Here's my here's my knock on this horse, okay? Two back was in the sloppy track, and he didn't like it. Now, it might have been green. It might have been a second start. But if it rains, the back of my mind, I'm going to be a little bit concerned because I don't think he ran very well in the Gotham at all, despite the fact that he got a good number. Didn't, um, he, win, didn't he win in the slop first out? Yeah, he won in the slop first out. But, but that was 
he had everything his own way. Okay. In the Gotham, he was getting kicked back, and he didn't really seem like he, he enjoyed it. And the, when he broke his maiden, he had a, he had a clear sailing and just went on went about and did it. And he's not going to make the lead. I don't. I'm true to send horses. That's for sure. But I don't think he wants to be in front. I think they would very much like Doorknock to be in front, and they'd like to chase. Um, the second thing is. He did all the dirty work early on. He battled through some some legitimate fractions last time in the progress. But like we talked about when we mentioned the highs of Sierra Leone, nobody closed that day, and Sierra Leone ran him down. Right. So, what is he gonna do between? What did he do from April sixth to May fourth? That's gonna that's gonna constitute the May difference. That round. No. But at the same time, the thing that plays in his favor, like Greg mentioned, when a twenty horse field, he's in front of him. So Sierra Leone has to navigate more traffic. Than just a touch does. Just a touch, uh, you know, should be able to work out a, a cleaner trip. He's out of his own stall. He's trained the Churchill Downs. He knows the racetrack. Um, I, I would think it's Brad Cox's best shot. And I, I wouldn't say that he's without a shout. I just think he's a little bit light on experience. This is a horse that I like for the future moving forward with, uh, with big expectations. But right now, I just prefer the more seasoned horses, um, like John said, in fierceness and Sierra Leone, like everybody else. Last year's winner mage won from the eight post position. All right, the nine in Sino has been scratched. We mentioned that a little earlier. So is this, by the way, this is where everything moves up, right? So so TO passwords now the nine. No, well, yeah. the number ten, but post nine. That's okay, all. post nine. Okay, so we'll just stick with but the. They remain. Uh, they remain. They remain the number. We'll we'll stick with the number. All right. So you got a long shot to password. Uh, what do you know about this horse, Chad? Before I, you know, we'll start with Chad since this is Look, a Japanese horse. Kentucky. Kentucky started this ten years ago, twenty whatever. They, they have a road to the Kentucky Derby in Europe. They have a road to the Kentucky Derby in Japan. And I've always thought that there should be some Americans that take the chance of running in this road to the Europe one and trying to backdoor your way into the race that way. The the road to the Derby for Japan, I, look, they want the handle from Japan. It's a ton of money. I get it. This horse does not deserve to be in this race. I'm sorry. He's run two races in his life. He won first time out. He broke his maiden. And then he won second time out by a head. Why, why should he take the spot of somebody else who's tried and running tougher races on the Derby trail the whole way? Um, I, I'm just – I'm not a fan – of this road to, the, to to allow a horse into the Kentucky Derby, uh, just because you're you're you live in Japan, that's that shouldn't be a thing. If you want to be in Japan, look, we had that horse last year, right, John, that ran in the Santa Anita Derby, that ran really well. Yeah, that was to finish second, third, whatever. If you want to, if you want to run in the Derby, you get the points here in America, and you get this is not this is not this is not the United Nations. This is the Kentucky Derby. I'm sorry, look, and and my horse, mind your biscuits, is standing stud in Japan. I love it. My Dermot Sadagaki ran in the Derby last year. He earned his way in through the UAE Derby, not through this Road to Japan series. I don't like this concept. I don't like this idea. I don't think it's it's fair to, to what goes on, and it, it, it's really kind of silly. Uh, and I don't think that this horse deserves to be in this race. And if you watch the other day, he's green as grass. He was galloping. He almost collided into the rail. I Can just I hope this horse doesn't. I hope this horse doesn't 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 affect the race in a negative standpoint. He's very very green and he's not ready for this kind of a race. I don't like this horse at all and I don't like this concept of the road to Japan and I'll get off my soapbox. Can I bet him to run dead last? They I'm have sure that. No. no because, yeah. because uh <laughs> somebody will. Tomorrow, he, After he, that he, speech he, I was all lined up to go make a bet on him. To run me and your son have done very well. I think we've hit this the last 3 years. They have for prop bets of who can run last and we've won, right. we've won it all 3 years. Look, you need to find the jockey that just doesn't care if the horse isn't going to win that he's going to wrap up. And that's the thing. <laughs> Kamara's not one of those jockeys. So I that's think he's the, I don't I, he might run 19, but I don't know that he runs 20. <laughs> so are there yeah. how many uh, positions do they give Japanese horses? One. Just one. one. Okay. From that that race in Japan. One That's what Japan and one for Europe. And nobody from Europe has accepted. And all those races are on the all weather surface and Dunkirk and Ken and, and you know, races you tracks you never heard of before. It looks like where they play minor league baseball games. Oh. I, I, it's just I, I don't understand this concept. If you wanna if you wanna if you wanna qualify for the Derby, qualify. And they have they have a race around the world, the UAE Derby, which the next horse we're gonna talk about forever young won and earned the points to come here. That's fine. They're 0 for 19. They haven't won that race from there yet, but at least you qualified that way. I have no problem. None of this, oh, oh yeah, just beat up on your on your little league baseball circuit and you qualify yeah, to run right. the world. For home run derby. Chocolate factory. You shouldn't get a you shouldn't get a ticket. It, right. it shouldn't work like that. 
Yeah, Not so fast, my friend. They're like trying to go said. global, like the NBA. And look at, look how that's, that's turned out. It's the global is for the Breeders' Cup. Global is not for the Kentucky Derby. It's not. You can't. Say, you can't have the SEC championship in football and say, you "Hey, Alabama." It's, it's all Alabama about Alabama money, Oakland. though. Uh, they want uh, the uh, handle, like you said, Chad. They want the Japanese interest. Okay, they okay. want the handle. It's all it's about. That's it. So they figured I'll surrender one of the twenty slots to to get uh, another fifty million dollars in handle. So what there's that? one from Japan, one from Europe. You're saying the the the, Europe, the European one did not. Nobody took took advantage of that one, as you said. Correct. And Correct. then Forever Young only got in because he he had to win at the UAE Derby based on points. He hasn't right. lost yet. That's correct. So right. but, Forever but, Young. But he, he, he didn't qualify for the Japan circuit because he took his talents on the road. Right. Okay. So even though he's even though Forever Young is 100 times more proven and better horse than Tio Password, yeah. Tio Password gets the Japanese spot. Yeah. And Forever Young, 10 to 1. We, we even have sheet sheet numbers there of sixes. We got two sixes on Forever Young. Uh, we talked about this horse before. Uh, I believe did we, we talk about him in both races, I believe, right? So, yeah. 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 So we, we we're very familiar with this horse. Uh, we'll start with you, John. What do you think about Forever Young? The problem is that he just ran in Dubai or wherever it was less than a month ago. So no horses. You, we see this from the Breeders' Cup. They don't come here and win. I just think it's a lot to overcome. Usually when they come back from those races, it takes them three, four, five, six months. You're asking this horse to do it without much time. That's the problem. Look, I've watched this horse train a lot. I know this horse very, very well. I'm still surprised that he wasn't scratched during the week of the Kentucky Derby. Um, Give him a chance. Yeah, it's they early. Still, he, um, he's never lost. He's never lost. And and to his credit, in the UAE Derby, he finally switched his leads, albeit late, but he did finally switch his leads, and he powered on to defeat a four-year-old uh, in, in Autobahn, and uh, Pandagate was was third, and Pandagate's a nice New York Red, you know, allowance horse. Um, look, I don't like this horse. I'm sorry. You, you can't you can't do the things he does and win the Derby. And I don't see how he's going to change what he's done. He's, he's doing the same antics. His workouts make no sense. He's, he went six furlongs in 119 with a Dale Romans maiden claimer. And, and then he came back and breezed yesterday on, on Wednesday, on uh, whatever day. I don't even know. Yesterday was, was Tuesday. Monday. No, Monday. 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 He breezed on Monday um, with more of the same. He, he doesn't really gallop out. He doesn't really show – um, you know, a lot. And look, I understand he's won. I understand he's going to be the sexy horse. I understand that everyone thinks that Japan wins everything, but I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not a fan of this horse, and I, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, to my grave, uh, not picking Forever Young. So it's just not, not for me. All right. Uh, by the way, do you think those odds will be affected by the Japanese market? Yes. Yes. So ten oh, to one. What do you think he's going to go off at? He'll go off at six to one. Okay. Uh, next up is Track Phantom. Now we're getting twenty to one on Track Phantom, who uh, went wire to wire in the Grade Three Lecomte to start the year. That was impressive. Unfortunately, uh, the thirteen was followed up by another thirteen when he got caught at the wire by a hard charging Sierra Leone. And then uh, he moved up to an 11 in the last race, the uh, Louisiana Derby. Unfortunately, he dropped off late, finishing fourth. So what about track Phantom, John? He never really took that big step forward. You know, he ran as a two-year-old. He never did anything wrong. 15, 15, 13, 11. You know, but he had the right to really get good off of that line. And he didn't. He just got back to the 11 last time out in his third start this year. The best he's going to do is pair up 11s and unfortunately that's not going to get it done not only that he's going to be part of the speed because he only has one way to go so he's going to be involved in that and that can't be good news for him and puts blinkers on too and yeah you know, what I mean, the hell is that that's like a desperate move and you'd be expecting yeah. more from Asmussen than that but i guess yeah it, just, it doesn't show much and you know, his workouts haven't really improved too much since adding the blinkers he's not really much more um, aggressive, more focused. I, I, I don't think he's pulling himself up. I think he just got beat by better horses in yeah, Sierra exactly. and, and catching freedom his last two starts. I just, um, I don't, I don't like it. And and you know, stat wise, Asmussen sixteen percent first time blinkers, fifteen percent blinkers on. For a bad trainer like me, those stats are okay. You take note, but for a guy like him that wins twenty percent, it's actually not that good of a stat. So um, everything uh, is relevant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna ghost a track fandom. The next four horses are uh, super long shots, including West Saratoga, John. Um, looks like a pretty slow horse coming off at 13 in that uh, Jeff Ruby stakes race, finishing second. Ran at 12 the race before that, but that's about it. You're right. All for the next four or five horses really have no shot. You should go to fierceness, I guess, unless Chad no, has no, 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 no. We miss no Chad's these horses. Go ahead, Chad. Pass all these horses. First of all, look, well, West Saratoga is going to be the popular horse. Great story. Larry Demerit, nice guy, has a barn of normally six horses, six, seven horses. So happy he's in the Derby. And the horse won uh, the biggest race of his career at Churchill Downs. He can't win, but that's fine. Uh, endlessly, look, Endlessly is unknown. You, here's the here's the only thing with Endlessly, and we we were hoping he was going to skip this race and run on the American turf, and we can bet him on the American turf because he's got a promising future on the turf. But John, at the end of the day, I mean, we've seen this before. Animal Kingdom comes to mind. Big Brown was a grass horse before he wasn't. This but, horse but Big was Brown horse. showed Big Brown showed his stuff on the dirt oh, also God. before the before. Florida, the Florida, but Animal Kingdom did not. Okay. Okay. He fine. The so. Uh, I'm, the horse, the horse is okay. Why, why, why is this horse completely devoid of having any chance to win? Just because he hasn't run on the dirt before. That's not why. His numbers okay. are slow. So you want him to? You're going to say that he's going to move way up on the dirt? It's possible. But why did they waste six races of his life and not run him on the dirt yet? Not only that, when you have a three-year-old that you think has a shot to make the derby, you are going to try to see if you have a derby horse, no? Listen, he's by Oscar Performance. He's a homebred from the Ammermans. He's five for six and made $707,000. You can't one shot on the the dirt, not one shot? Yeah, he ran ran at a different different poly track service at Golden Gate. (laughs) It's hey, actually the I, same. I think, it's the Peter. I, I think the, the El Camino Real Derby, by the way, I think he's guaranteed a spot in the Preakness. I think it's a win and you're in for the Preakness. It so is. He, <laughs> he should have waited Look, for the Preakness. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I'm not saying that I love this horse, but I think Oscar Performance is an underrated sire. I think they've won some races on the dirt. And if they want to try look, the Ironmans have been a part of this game for a long, long time. They it's deserve the shot. If you have a horse that made the derby, you have to go. I'm not saying he shouldn't go, but I'm just saying he's wasting his time going. That's all. I could be wrong. Listen, the horse keeps winning. All he does is win, win, win. He, what do he do? Lose once in his life? He's five for six lifetime. Listen, not for anything, too, John. Normally, those turf horses, they win by a neck. They win by a nose. They right. win by half a lump. This horse is won by oh, – he's won by two and a quarter, two and a half, two and a quarter, one and a quarter, and four. It's, and it's not It's not like he just wins. He's 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 dominated the performances, and, and I just I just have a feeling – that he's okay. I know his 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 dirt works aren't great, and he's probably not gonna. You're right. He's probably not gonna win. He probably doesn't hit the board. But at, at, at thirty to one, why not? not? We never not argue with price horses. Not an automatic. I'm just. I just wanted to say for the record, he's okay. not an automatic toss because we don't know. It's okay. not. At least at least we don't know. It's better than we know that you suck. Yeah, right. but, you know. There are there are several long shots in this race that if they were to like pull off, you know, a, a, a huge upset. We could turn to their record and go, well, it, it, something was there. Right. No, that, that's yeah, the thing yeah. with Endlessly. That's the thing with Endlessly. If Endlessly wins this race, we come back and we say, well, he liked the dirt. Exactly. Yeah. That's all. There are horses that you could say can't win, and then they go and win, and you can't understand. You can't figure out for the life of you. But that's not the case with this horse. This yeah. is an unknown. This horse well, has an unknown quali- uh, quantity about him that we won't know till after he runs in the race. That's okay. all. Which which leads us to the fifteen horse in domestic product, and I don't know why this one is a is a a, a gloss over. You have you have a reigning Eclipse Award champion in Irad Ortiz, who's who's you know arguably the best rider in the race. You have Chad Brown, who's one of the best trainers in the race, and this horse is coming off a win in the Tampa Bay Derby, which didn't exist. It didn't count because there was no wagering. So John has put it in the back of his mind because he got his rebate, he got his refund, despite the fact that they he won the race before that did count. It doesn't matter. They canceled everything. So I think he's mad at the horse because the uh, – They gave me a $4 double instead of a $14 (laughs) double. Yes. I forgot all about that, and you just just shook me up. Thank you, Kevin. Look, I mean, he's trained trained really well going into this race. He breezed well with Sierra Leone last week. Um, Tyler Gaffleon was a boredom for that work, and he he two thumbs up on on how the horse was moving and and moving forward. 
I just I, I don't think this horse is without a chance. He's got the right running style to where he'll make a, a, a closing kick. I can see this horse running third or fourth in this race and and being you know the early the early kind of catchy horse for the Belmont Stakes as as one of the favorites to win the Belmont Stakes. So I don't think this horse is without a shot, especially uh, to hit the board. I can definitely see domestic product uh, hitting the board here at a big odds. Okay. And what about Grand Mo the first? Nah, nah, no. Nah. Not even Chad could <laughs> not even Chad could invent that one. <laughs> is that a horse going to finish well, last? Hey, hey, they want they they're trying to keep the trophy in Venezuela. Okay, mm-hmm. so Gustavo Delgado won it last year. He'd right. like to hand, like the green jacket in the Masters. Maybe they like to hand it off and say uh, "Muy bueno" to Victor Barboza, another Venezuelan trainer, uh, to keep it within the uh, the family. All right, how did this fierceness get in here? How did he get enough points to get in here? In Grand Mode, the he first third in the Tampa Derby and third in the Florida Derby. Oh. He had four oh. points. That was, he's he's tw- he's <laughs> he's the cutoff. Look at that, losing by sixteen lines. By the way, by the way, that's why they should draw post positions by the amount of points you have. If you have the most points, <laughs> you choose your first. The second point. Why you think that's so I, crazy? I agree. I've suggested it on the show before. Yeah, and so have I. All right, it's fierceness. Sense. Morning line favorite, five to two. Pletcher, Velasquez yeah. coming off of five. And what did we talk about before the Florida Derby? Was the inconsistency of fierceness, and if he kept true to that, it would hurt him for the Kentucky Derby. But it would be a benefit to anybody that wanted to uh, go against him here. So, and that includes John, um, because sheets. The sheet numbers say this: seven. 21, 5, 10, 5. So the sheets also are telling you that he's never put two races together. Also, I mean, the races that he won, he made easy leads and he had things basically his own way. He never really had a fight. I know he sat off the last time when he won a little bit, but I think he wants the lead. Listen, can he win? Of course he can win. No one else has a five, a four and a half as a two-year-old. This horse could run anything. But I want to see him put two in a row together, and he's going to be the big favorite. I don't like betting favorites in 20-horse fields. That's all. If he won, would I be shocked? No. But I'm betting against him. I love, I love I love, that John works for Ragas and Sheets, and two years in a row he bets against the horse that has the best Ragas. And last year was two fields. We ran the big second. You hated that number because it was on the poly track. And right. <laughs> but did he win? Did he win? He ran second. He ran second. Okay. Do you get paid if, for win if, you were, if he ran second? No. Again, Fierceness could certainly win, and he's probably the most likely winner in the race. No one has a seven or a five as a two-year-old. So let's get that straight. It Look. would be no shock if he won. Is he the right horse to bet at? Uh, you want to take two to one in a 20-horse field? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, here, here's here's the thing. Playing exact is playing trifectas with the handle that's on this race with people who are going to try and beat him. You know, he, he's going to stay at five to two. He's not going to drop below five to two. There's just it's too big of a field with too many different horses going on. Okay. For for me, he's the best horse of this crop so far. I mean, I think the horse that was second to him first time out might be better, but you know, we'll we'll find out later on down the road. At, at the end at the end of the day, he's run the most brilliant races. He's trained the brilliant. He's trained the most brilliant. He's done everything so easy. I haven't seen Todd Pletcher this excited since Always Dreaming. Um, he's won the Derby before. When Todd had Always Dreaming, he didn't go to Dubai. He was running the World Cup. He, he stayed by. He, he never left the side of of Always Dreaming. And then things kind of didn't go right the last week of the of the Derby prep for Always Dreaming, and he still was able to get the win. And then kind of went the other way. Everything's gone right for this horse. He's breezed well. I can make an excuse for the champagne. I feel like they were trying to teach him. He didn't like the kickback. He was learning. He was green. He was immature. Um, I thought the Holy Bull, you could make a couple of excuses. Didn't like how he came out of the gate. I thought Irad Ortiz didn't really do him any favors that day, um, trying to make things difficult for him. Maybe he wasn't really 100% geared up for that race. Um, the Florida Derby, we saw what fierceness was, and it's plenty of time to recover. If you watch his workouts, and they're all they're all over social media, you can watch any one of his workouts. Um, he's he's a special horse. He's a special horse, and and he does it the right way. He finishes his races the right way. It's not a distance concern. I have, I have no concern uh, about his distance. I have no concern about anything. The, the question is, and John's not wrong about if you get into a fight, what happens? But with his post position, 
if he gets a, on a fight, fortunately, he's going to be on the outside, not the he's inside. He's in the right the spot. There's he's no in, question. He's drawn he's well. well. I mean, he's drawn really well for 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 Hall of Fame connections. Look, John Velasquez is only running, is only riding races now to win the Kentucky Derby. This is all he wants to win. He doesn't care if he doesn't win another race for three months. He wants to win the Kentucky Derby. And, Okay. Uh, you know, these are the connections that had Uncle Mo all those years ago. Um, and I love the fact that, that Rapoli Stables spends $28 billion of the sales every year, and he's got a shot to win the Derby with a homebred. Uh, <laughs> it, it, he's just he's just, he's just the best horse of the crop. He's the best horse of the generation. Um, it's his race to lose. I understand why people try and beat him, but I'm not saying he's a bingo square in a 20-horse field, but he's as, he's as talented a horse as there is. Um, and he has the right running style where things shouldn't go, shouldn't get in his way. And, and if they do go wrong, I don't think this is the Holy Bull. I think John Velasquez has learned uh, a valuable lesson in the Holy Bull. John Johnny had to learn what happened about there? the horse a little bit. He, he just – things didn't go his way, and he, he kind of picked up his ball and went home. But I think Johnny knows that now. Johnny's ridden so many races, so smart. I mean – He's, he's just such a smart savant of the game. I mean, this is like, you know, a Nick Saban or, or a Tom Brady that have been there, done that before, and the moment's never going to be too big. I just it, – it's fierceness is race to lose. I'm sorry that it's not a it's not a big price or whatever, but, but don't try and beat this horse just to get cute. He's the best horse in the race. He's the best horse of the crowd. Now, I, I think the uh... – I think trying to beat this horse is definitely not about being cute. In my mind, it's about what we've talked about. Um, he has shown to be inconsistent. So, and he's a short price. He's, he's going to yeah. be the favorite sure. in a 20 horse field. Again, he could certainly win. Hey, Don't get me wrong. We're not going to be shocked next week if we say what a great no. performance by fierceness. And it would be, and it would be great for the sport because if he wins yeah. this race, well, first of all, uh, hopefully uh, Rapoli brings with him a different priest because he brought his he brought his priest with him last year, and uh, and the horse with Forte was scratched the morning of the race. So hopefully he brought a he brought another uh, another another uh, representative for the cloak to not get this one scratched on the morning of the race. Um, he's trained too well though. He's trained very well going into this race. But uh, John, you've been doing this for fifty years, okay? And what's the, the number one thing you've learned? A short price is better than better a long, than a long price. price. Correct. <laughs> but a long price is even better. <laughs> yes, I understand. It's even better when you're right. <laughs> All right. Next up is the 18 Stronghold, another 20 to 1 shot, coming off back to back 10s. Yeah, he's fine. I mean, listen, he's in another group. He's the other group of horses. He hasn't really done anything wrong. He had a 13 top as a two-year-old at Churchill. He returns to Churchill today, and he returns to Churchill a better horse than he was the last time he was here. And he's a price. I'm, I would use him underneath. I got no problem with him. I like the. I, you talk about you know fierceness hasn't been in that in that dog fight before. Well, this horse was. I mean, that was a battle to the wire with imagination. He out he out fought Baffert. I mean, he he earned that victory. And you I mean, know what he did? I saw that. You know what he said after the race. He the horse has a tendency to pull himself up. I I don't know. You would know better than me. You're a trainer, and he waits on horses. So I don't know what you do in a twenty horse field. What are you going to wait on horses? They're all there all the time. So I I you know I'm just he's got a he's got a win over the track at Churchill, which I think goes a long way. Yeah, um, he's done things the right way. I wish he was a little bit of a bigger horse. He's a little bit on the on the smaller side. Um, physically in nature, but Mage, Mage was as well. So yeah. I mean, that doesn't mean you can't win if you're if you're a smaller if you're a smaller size. Um, I just for for me, he's a cool horse. He's a try hard. Uh, nobody's gonna be rooting harder for Phil the model than me. He deserves this opportunity, this run. He's an underrated trainer in California and should be on the national scene uh, year in and year out. So uh, certainly rooting for for Phil and the connections here, Antonio Frezu. I mean, he, he, he I brought him to America a few years ago. He was nicknamed Tony Pizza. Now he's a great one winning jockey. So, um, so, so happy for these connections. Going to be pulling hard for them, um, but they're going to have their work cut out for them. All right. Next up is Resilience, another 20 to 1 shot. Um, Mott trained horse coming off a nine, winning the Wood Memorial. So we've got the Santa Anita Derby winner at 18 and the Wood Memorial winner at 19. What, is, what about Resilience, John? Well, this is another one. If you look at a sheet, has never put two races together. Last year, 13-18. This year, 11-14. And now he's off a nine. So, 
you know, the conventional thinking would be that he's probably going to react, but he's going to be a big price. They put blinkers on last time, and maybe that's what made the difference. I don't know. But, again, he's got a chance. He's like other horses in the race. And he's 0 for 2 at Churchill. Okay. He's 0 for 2 at Churchill. Fine. But he's over too. He he got beat by Stronghold, running second to Stronghold, <laughs> and then he was he was third behind Nash when everybody decided that Nash was the best horse in the country for that uh, three month span. Three weeks, yeah. Good luck to Nash in the Pate Mile. Uh, that's his right distance. Uh, resilience, resilience to me is a nice horse. We've been a fan of this horse. We picked him on top in the Wood Memorial last time out. Um, he's a horse who's getting better. Uh, Junior Alvarado certainly no stranger to the big stage. He won the twenty million dollar race earlier this year in Saudi Arabia. So. Um, he's not going to be concerned. I'm not really too concerned with the post, even though it's outside, um, because I think this horse is tactical. He can he can he can do a lot of different things from different places. I wish he was coming into this race just a little bit better. Th- I'd like to see him a little bit better in the morning time than than I've seen him. But he's ser- he's definitely not without a shot. Um, you know, if I had to pick one horse that was above uh, above you know single digits, this would be the horse that I would use. As my as my little bit of a price horse here, I, I think. Resilience better than is, Anna Maria. Better, I thought you. I think they're similar horses. I think they're. I think they're both. Anna, Anna Maria and Resilience are, are are very similar horses, to be honest. With you. Anna Maria will be a lot longer price, I think, only because it might. So. And the only thing I'll say is, you know, you talk about stats. Listen to this: in Bill Mott's last 104 graded stakes races, he's winning at 25. percent That's ridiculous, and that's not the Bob in California. <laughs> Right. He's winning at twenty five percent. He he for me, I mean he's a he's a legend of the game. He's somebody I've looked up to for a long time. I I got introduced to this sport watching cigar, um, as as a kid. You know, growing up in Long Island, I, my favorite horse of all time is a horse named Hap that that Bill Mott trained. Um, that I used to chase mm-hmm. into into his barn. I wait for Bill Mott to leave the barn on the pony, and I'd sneak into the backside to to pet Hap, which I probably shouldn't have done when I was 12, 13 years old. Uh, but at the end of the day, um. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to win these races. And, uh, you know, we talk about Brad Cox winning the Derby uh, via DQ. And Brad Cox says it doesn't feel right. Well, Mott won this race via DQ, too, with Country House getting put up over maximum security. So I think he'd like to win this this race one time. And he's not getting any younger. Um, so we, we got to root for resilience here. You know, Mott okay. deserves it. And yeah, we'll root. All right. Next up is Society Man, who ran the race of his life, finishing second in the Wood Memorial. Ran a ten there, so uh, yeah. Uh, Would you have liked to have been uh, Danny Gargan on uh, Draw Day? He got the rail with one of his horses, and they said, "You're not happy with that? Well, we'll give you the twenty post with your <laughs> other horse," <laughs> and that's what he got. Two horrible posts. I don't like it. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. Tell I me. picked this horse on top in the Withers when he was a maiden, okay? Yeah. And he didn't, he didn't run any good that day, and and we have, you know, some some ideas as to what happened. He came back, was impressive when he broke his maiden, ran a good second in the wood behind Resilience. Frankie DeTore uh, retires more times than Michael Jordan. Um, he keeps coming back. He wants to win the Derby. I don't think he's ever come close to winning the Derby. I like I like Frankie DeTore taking over this horse. He's going to come from mid-pack or behind. He's going to come with a late run. He's a cool horse. Well, he can pick up. I'm Listen, if this horse comes in the top five, am I going to be shocked? No. No. So, you know, hit, listen, Society Man and and the Safi Joseph horse are very similar horses here um, in Catalytic. I, I just I, I think both of them can, can run a big race and run fourth or fifth. So uh, I, I'm not going to say I don't think Society Man can win, but I think he can pick up a check. And then the last horse, right now, as far as we know it, uh, due to the scratch, is Epic Ride. And Epic Ride, uh, 30 to 1 shot. Uh, another horse uh, that has uh, actually at least, he ran all on synthetic up until the bluegrass, finished third to Sierra Leone, and ran a 10 in that race. So uh, this horse, uh, what is that? Was that his uh, third 10, John, or his fourth 10? Yeah. Third 10. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. Well, that's not bad, running 10s. No, no, he's just got a tough post, and uh, there's a lot of good horses inside of him, like 19 of them. But he's well, there. There's a horse that won from post 20 not too long ago in Red Strike with a similar kind of uh, running that was running at Turfway Park. Uh, I try to buy this horse, made no bones about it. I try to buy this horse after, after he actually ran second and then broke his maiden in January. 
um, from a barn that normally sells everything they run in John Ennis, and he wouldn't sell the horse. Um, there was no offer I can make that can get him to sell the horse. I like this horse a lot. Um, he didn't really want to switch his leads. He went, he, he battled with that for a while. He, he did a better job of switching his leads on the dirt uh, than he did on the poly track surface at Turfway. And in hindsight, his second in the John Battaglia behind uh, Encino looks okay because Encino came back and won the Lexington. Uh, um, look, I think this horse is a nice horse. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I'm glad he, he, he got into this race. He deserves his chance in the race, but. You know, similar to like what we said about about just a touch, I don't I don't see where he gets the five lengths where he's going to improve off Sierra Leone, but uh, he deserves to be in the race. I think he beats at least half the field. Um, happy for connections to make this race. He's a horse with a, with a promising future. No matter what happens here um, on Saturday, I think he's a horse that's got a bright future ahead of him. Time to make picks, John. John uh, well, we know uh, we we know who you like. The seven on a Marie, twenty to one shot. So uh, what are you gonna what are you gonna put with Anna Marie? The obvious horses: the two Sierra Leone, the eight Just the Touch, and the seventeen Fierceness. First and second, obviously, King the seven. Chadwick, I'm going with Fierceness on top of Sierra Leone, uh, and then I'll just play underneath. Um, I'll take some shots here with Catalytic Anna Marie, uh, Just the Touch, and hold on. So that's five seven tw- seventeen with two with five seven. I, look, I, I think this is how I'm going to play this race. Uh, I think it's a two-horse race, and I think it's the two favorites. So you play you play 217, 217, and then you play a bunch of horses underneath trying to get in the third and fourth spot in, in Catalytic, Anna Marie, Just a Touch. Um, five, seven, Domestic, domestic eight, product, five, strong, seven, old, resilient, society man, and epic ride. So you go, you go deep in the third and fourth spots. It, it's not a bet that costs you a lot of money. And, and you can make a lot of money even with the favorites running one, two. And if you split them, you can look, make another ticket where you put them. You put second. all those horses in second. You put the, the other two in third. First yeah, and it's not an expensive ticket. No, no. no. That, that's, you can get a you can, $400 try that way, believe me. Yeah. That's not no, you can make a, lot, you can make a lot of money. on the, You can't do that on the regular. No. The handle isn't, the handle isn't big enough. Right. But on Derby Day, that's that's where you make your money. If you If you feel like I feel. Um, and it's nothing against some of these other horses rooting for some of these other horses. I, I just, in my mind, this is the first time in a long time where I feel so strongly about the top two horses just being Ooh. better than these other horses. Uh, something will happen. Never works out as easy as it looks. That's a problem. So, <laughs> so that was two, five, seven, eight, fifteen. I got it. Two seventeen with two seventeen with five, seven, eight, fifteen, nineteen, twenty one. That is 2021. 2021. 2020. Who's 20? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. 2021. So that was eight horses with the with the winner. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're not using resilience, or you are. Yeah, yeah. That's 19, 20, 21. Okay. 19, 20, 21. Oh, okay. 18, 19, 20, 21. Correct. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, Kino. seven, I'm eight, nine. Kino. All right, and your your selection, Mr. Host of the show? I'm going to do just a touch. So just I'm going to do the eight over two, seven, 14. And the only reason I'm leaving Fierceness out is because if Fierceness doesn't win, I'm just going to say that he's just, something's going to happen. He's just not going to fire. You're right. All right. Um, yeah, so that's going to wrap it up. Uh, oh, uh, and I know you have all these horses uh, – these big long shots. Some of them are long shots, but give me your favorite long shot, Chad. Chad, your favorite long shot. Can we have it? Yeah, I mean, my favorite long shot, I guess, is going to be resilience. Okay, the nineteen. All right, John already has a long shot in the seven. All right, so that's going to wrap it up. Uh, John, if anybody uh, is watching for the first time and they have no idea who you are, even though we'll have links in the description so they could check you out, uh, what do you have to say for yourself? Nothing. All right. And Chad, uh, what do you got working uh, for you? you? You got some horses coming out uh, in the next couple of days? Yeah, we got 365 days to the Derby next year. That's that's our. That's what uh, you're working on. That's, that's what he's always year. working on that. If we're, not, if we're not in Churchill next year, we're going to be very disappointed. All right, gentlemen. Appreciate it as always. Great job. Look forward to seeing you. We'll be back again next week and every week. Even though we took off last week, we made up for it with the uh, double races uh, this week. So, again, enjoy the big races, everybody, and we'll see you next time.